Welcome back, everybody. This is our YouTube show, and you're watching it. I'm Derek. I'm Whitney. I'm Jack. And this is New Movies, Worst, Worst People. People. Worst People. Where were you on that one? <laughs> wow. wow, you have the worst timing. <laughs> Welcome back. We went and saw another movie for your enjoyment, Shutter. not for our enjoyment. No, I don't. I never enjoy this. <laughs> this episode, we are discussing Dream Scenario, the new Nick Cage movie. The elusive Nick Cage movie. Yes, yeah. it took us forever to get this one. It seems to be a common theme with some of the ones we watch of his, because wasn't Retirement Plan a very similar situation? Yeah, it, it was. Well, it was supposed to be out, and then it wasn't out forever, and then it finally showed up, and then, yeah, it was like one or two weeks. Yeah. And this will <laughs> this will probably be very quick as well. Yeah, well, it's this, an A twenty. It's an A twenty four. Yeah, it's A twenty four, and also fifty thousand movies come out in the next three weeks. A twenty four. What the studio? A. Studio. Oh, I was same like, studio that does August. one of the trailers. <laughs> She thought we were saying it was August. <laughs> I mean, I know I don't often know what month it is, but I know we. I see jingle bells. <laughs> yes. I see mistletoes. Not I, in this house. I can put it together. A little, well, not, it's, not here. it's 39 degrees outside sometimes, which means it's December or January. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> if you see my hair down, terrible. it's cold out. Cool enough. <laughs> so, yes, we went and saw Dream Scenario, the new A24 film starring Nick Cage about people dreaming about Nick Cage. So it's like a documentary about yes. my life. <laughs> Uh, but first, as we do, we'll talk about some of the new previews we saw. Mostly teasers, which is nice. I love um, that. We'll wait until they release the next trailer so I can see the movie. Some of them <laughs> still had too much information for me. Like well, sometimes it's like, oh, and then this, my brother dies. I'm like, well, that would have been devastating. Yeah, that's the Iron Claw one. Yeah. Yeah. That, and I saw that in the last trailer, too. And I guess it's one of those things where like, well, it's a true story. So people know that. A I'm true like, story I don't know. that I don't know. Exactly. I don't know who the fuck the Von Erich brothers are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not that into wrestling, especially this time frame of wrestling. Although I definitely saw a shot in there where he looked like Ric Flair. Yes, uh -huh. like, that's neat. what I fucking saw. I will say, Zac Efron looks like hulkingly good. He's what? always been well fit. Did he do something to his jawline, though? Uh, he probably did neck exercises. Neck exercises. But his his jaw was just way more square than maybe, I knew yeah. like, I, could be maybe, prostatic yeah maybe it's a saying. prosthetic thing because I don't know what the guy he's playing looked like yeah. also like she's like he looks weird and I was like it's because he's adult jacked but he's got his high school musical haircut again <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's got that pumpkin pie haircut but he looks chiseled and then uh, Jeremy Allen White Ooh, lip. who is always like, even in Shameless he's kind of fit but now he is like he well fit though isn't it he <laughs> Yeah, I he fit I, to fit in these dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I think the movie looks good. I'm going to go see it. Yeah. Even though I saw it today. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch the extended cut. <laughs> <laughs> the director's cut. All two Too hours. Much of detail. That's another A24, though. Was so, it A24 yeah, also? Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, the other ones was uh, there was a new Bloomhouse picture, Night Swim. It started out with uh, Wyatt Russell and... and his wife. Oh, I didn't recognize her. I oh, I definitely recognized her. But they're getting a new house and everything. And it's like, okay, well, is this a drama? Is this... And then Bloomhouse Pictures comes up. And I was like, oh, no, it's a horror movie. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, it, this trailer was kind of dumb. It just. It made me want to see it. <sighs> Open your fucking eyes. <laughs> the guy behind us was like, they should show us the whole movie. I'm like, it's one. Literally, it's a scene from the movie. Yeah. Like they get a house. They get a pool. The girl's in the pool. Some creepy shit happens. Well, some girl's in the pool. Yeah. Uh, Carrie Condon. I don't know who that is. Oh, Carrie yeah. Condon. Okay. I say it Condon. She was in um, Banshees of Inisherin last year. She's the one that I thought got screwed out of her Best Supporting Actress Oscar. Okay. Well, this I should, mean, Jamie this Lee Curtis got it. it. Right up. Jamie Lee Curtis got it, and Jamie Lee Curtis deserves an Oscar. And For I'm not sure. Saying, but Carrie Condon's performance was better last year. So, gotcha. Anyway. I have nothing to say to that. Fair. Fair. <laughs> uh, it just like the the trailers, you know, trying to be spoopy and yada yada, and the whole thing could be avoided when you are playing Marco Polo with somebody and with they go just two people, but just two people at nighttime and they go completely quiet for you long enough. You eyes. open your eyes, you open your eyes, and you I could look. be drowning. I don't want to break the rules. <laughs> Get out there and you find that fucking dog. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, something creepy's in the pool. 
I, don't I know. can hear you. There was like a get out thing in the trailer, like when she gets pulled into the pool and then they show the pool really far away. Yeah. Like when he's doing the hypnotizing thing, or the, oh, I guess it's the that mom scene that's was doing dope. It. Yeah. But that's about it for that one. I don't know. I'll probably watch it because she wants to watch it. I don't know if I'm interested or not. Unless we do an episode, I'm I'm passing. There's nothing there that it's bringing me back. And then there's uh, the One Love trailer, or is it Bob Marley One Love? Is that the whole title? I think so, but it's hard to say. Yeah. But either way, it's it's a movie about Bob Marley that might be called One Love. I've been seeing this trailer a bunch for a while. And now it says next year. I swear it was supposed to be this year, but I mean, strikes and whatnot yeah, probably delayed it. Happens. It happens. But I don't know. It looks interesting. I know some of the story. I'm not the biggest Bob Marley fan. As but... the the resident reggae guy in the room, neither am I. <laughs> I just I, I I think that he did a lot for the music in a uh, subgenre that I don't care for. You know, he's not happy my reggae. But no, like the roots reggae. <laughs> okay. I prefer the happier, soulful reggae, oh, okay. like little Derek Morgan. But anyway, I'll still see it because I'm sure it's going to be good. Even the ones about musicians I don't care for end up good. Yeah. Maybe not my favorite because I don't you care about him. You learned a little him. something about him. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully I'm it's curious true. if it's going to be like a, a true story or if it's going to be like a Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Where they like just take, they're like, well, that happened, that happened, and that happened, but we'll just put them in any order and make mm -hmm. up the rest. And I know that he wasn't, uh, it was a good, he, was, he did some bad stuff as a father. So we'll probably skirt right over that. I'm sure. He's supposed to be the hero. Yeah. He's uh, the good guy. And then the zone of interest, which they didn't tell us anything about, which was fine with me. I thought it looked really interesting, whatever the fuck it's about. I get I get Nazi vibes. Yeah. yeah. There's some World War II something. And it was saying, like, it's about taking care of your children and caring about your family and wanting the best for them and also atrocities. Yeah. So I'm assuming that the guy is a Nazi and they're showing, like, he's a good father. He's got and a, a collection good family of teeth and, and they're not his. Yeah. That's weird. Well... We've heard about that, so yeah. But I'm assuming that's what it's gonna be. Is like, oh, look at he does all these terrible things, but he's a good dad. Yeah, he did it for a good reason. But it's gonna he make stole a loaf of bread to feed his family. <laughs> except the loaf of bread was a human being, and he murdered it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could murder a loaf of bread. <laughs> I could murder a loaf of bread. <laughs> Ask the waitress at a uh, fucking Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> I'm no longer allowed at that establishment. <laughs> You ate too much bread, sir. <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody. Little, little did they know, I don't know who it is. <laughs> uh, that one. I'm waiting for my uh, friend to join me. And then you're just there at closing time. They're like, oh, stood up. And you're like, oh, no, I don't have any friends. <laughs> I'm meeting a friend here at the end of the night. Well, I didn't meet anybody. I kept saying hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Jack. No? Okay. See ya. I I'll was trying to again. meet somebody, but I was sitting at a table, not the bar. <laughs> it made it real weird. I had friendship ribs. <laughs> <laughs> I'd I be love your friend. Friendship ribs. See? <laughs> See, I'm not a bad guy. That's how he got me. Although, don't touch my ribs. Just the ones without in the asking. middle of the table. Yeah, without asking. <laughs> <laughs> I got a buffer rib there in the middle. So, this film, Dream Scenario, directed by a guy named Christopher Borgley. I'm probably butchering it, but hey. But you're trying. I'm trying. That's what matters. Uh, he directed another movie called Sick of Myself, which I know was available through Vinegar Syndrome, and people were talking about how awesome it was, but I haven't seen it. Yeah. That's the only thing I really recognized. He only had like four movies on this thing. Based on his name, I would say he's not an American director. So, Guessing. <laughs> and we've got, obviously, Nicolas Cage. Woo! Uh, his wife's played by Juliana Nicholson. Who she's she's fooled me before because I know it's not her, but I keep thinking it is the Indiana Jones lady. Oh, okay, yeah, I see what um, I mean. Uh, but it's not also her. in Sandlot, I'm, I'm blanking. Anyway, yeah. it's not her. It's a name we should know. She is. It is. <laughs> uh, she fooled this actress. Fooled, was it Juliana Nicholson? Yeah. She fooled me in uh, oh the the fucking mafia one with Johnny Depp, Black Mass. Oh, okay. The, the Johnny Depp Mafia one, like there's only one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't remember her being in... Uh, Donnie Brasco. Donnie, Donnie Brasco, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, she's in Black Mass and she's well acted. She was in the the Weird Al movie. Oh, She okay. was in I, Tanya. A couple things. Uh, one of his daughters is another name I recognized, Sophie, played by a girl named Lily Bird. She was in Bo is Afraid and she was in the Northmen, Northmen. Uh, both A24. Actually, I don't think Northmen was A24. Northmen's how I know her. But I think I watched Northmen and I think I enjoyed it. Yeah. It's the but funny one, right? No. No. You're, I did not. you're thinking about the like Northmen. I was thinking of yeah, Northmen. Northmen, which is great. Northmen yes. is not you funny. You should think of it. And Northmen, <laughs> yeah, it's not funny. I mean, you could laugh, but uh, <laughs> we all know how terrible of a person I am. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, those are the only people just scrolling cursory through the IMDb that I even really recognize. I recognize Molly. 
who was in a later she's in the later scene. Yeah. She's in um she had like five episodes in Shameless, but she was in um oh my god, Jack, what did I just say it was? Uh something I've never seen or heard of. Oh, oh Unbreakable me. Kimmy Schmidt. Unbreakable I, heard, Kimmy I Schmidt. overheard you. Yeah, Xanthia. I have heard of it. Xanthium? She Z- played an Xanthan asshole gum? teenager. Yeah. <laughs> Xanthan gum. That's her character's name. <laughs> Terrible name. <laughs> she will thicken your stew. <laughs> That's, you I know mean, it, if you said it with like any different voice, <laughs> she will thicken your stew. She does attempt to thicken Nicolas Cage's yeah, stew, but yeah. we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> so again, this is where we talk about new movies, and we're not going to try to go. We'll we'll go a little bit into the first couple acts, but we don't want to say too much. Not that they really give you anything to give away. No, but there's some things I think you should find out on your own or yeah. experience on your own. Not Definitely. find out because I'll. I don't think you really find anything out. No. So up up top, we could just say like, what was the what was your overall impression? Like, not necessarily recommendation, but what did you think of? It wasn't what I expected, and that's okay. okay. I did not hate it. Um, I didn't. I didn't love it, but I will watch it again. Kind of thing. I think so I, have I guess to that watch is a recommendation. <laughs> Shit. I think I have to watch it again to yeah. understand it. A little and I, more. I don't think that will help. Probably not much, <laughs> but it's worth a shot. Yeah, there's a lot of information they didn't include, which I love, by the way. I did like, so it was it was kind of where I expected it to go based on the trailers I saw, where like it starts with the dreams and then they get weirder. But then like I felt like I felt like the movie was executed really well. I felt like it was done really well, but I also felt like at the end they just didn't really like Not resolve anything. It? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this thing happened. Uh, it's unexplained. It's done. Get and I don't need them it, to explain kinda. the event per no, se. No, no, but no. But like, I felt like the story just kind of like petered off. I agree. But uh, so it starts with the dream and the dreams in this, not all of them, but I felt like a lot of the dreams uh, had like a dreamlike kind of quality. Yes. Like they were shot differently. Not like there was any CG, like wiggly wobbly things on the screen or anything like that. But different angles. Maybe it was shot with like a higher frame rate. Maybe they were using like a different film stock. I definitely I don't see know. what you're saying because I think every dream that I almost said dream scenario. He said it. <laughs> uh, I think every time it, it's a dream, you are uh, you're pretty aware. At least I was yeah. without going like, I wonder if this is really happening. Even when it's a very grounded one, you still kind of know. Yes. Yeah, maybe so maybe using it's different to, lenses to what or you're something. Saying. Yeah, I don't know because you could definitely tell, like even the later on one where Nick Cage is, they're showing his dream. It was like I was like, oh, this is a dream, and then I was like, wait, no, it's not. I'm like, wait, y- yeah, is it? And how did you know it was a dream? <laughs> you just did. Yeah, there was definitely, and we should have given him some stickers or something. There was a gentleman oh, that man. was sitting in front of us during this. Oh, he was right? behind us, right? No, no, no he, he was, was in front. Of front. Us. Oh, yeah. he sounded like he was behind us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's a laugh ventriloquist. Oh my gosh, it was fantastic. There was he made more it than for me. there was more than once that I didn't find something that funny until he, he just laughed. cackled. It's <laughs> like, well, now now I'm in. I'm, and then I'm, I laugh at his laugh. Yeah, uh, good for you Thank for enjoying you. it, man. Thank yeah, you very much. should be allowed to laugh in theaters. But because it, it is a dark comedy, yeah. it's just not. Don't, don't, don't laugh at death, Derek. <laughs> I think I've told that story on the you podcast. Have. Death right? is yeah. never funny. Tune according in, to tune some into the people. podcast and find out why death is never funny. <laughs> <laughs> but um, also watch Final Destination and find out why death is definitely <laughs> never funny. Wasn't it like the second or third one? I think it was the third one. Yeah, That's I think I only. Funny. I think only Devin saw while the first one. Yeah, because uh-huh. he saw all his neck off. Ooh, did he? Didn't he make it through that one? No, he killed no himself. he no he makes it through the first one. I think Doesn't, he kills himself. Kind of. He's, wait, he's the, the beginning of no, the second one. The, the screen just alive? shuts off when there's like a big thing swinging at him or the person that pushed him out of the way. It's like who's next? And like a marquee or a piece of a light thing swings at the guy and then camera off. Uh, okay, I, I haven't watched so the first upset. one in a long time. Good for you. I have all, all of them on uh, Blu-ray. Want to watch it? I had a feeling you're going to say that. <laughs> Let's do it. There's almost nothing I can talk about. That you're like, I have it on Blu-ray. <laughs> I, I was speaking about a documentary on tacos. How do you have that on Blu-ray? <laughs> hey, have you heard of the Zapruder film? Yeah, I have it on 4K. Documentary? <laughs> Yeah, you want to see uh, JFK get shot in high definition? I actually do. <laughs> <laughs> Back and to the left. Uh, so it starts with a dream, and it's Nick Cage raking leaves. And his daughter is having is she's just sitting there and this table, this glass table just explodes. Yeah. And she looks down and like some keys had fallen <laughs> through it. And then all this random shit starts falling out of the sky. And she starts. A body f- fell into the pool. Yeah. A shoe falls into the pool first. Yeah. like And then a body. Yeah. 
And then, like, she starts floating away, and her dad's like, uh, don't worry about it. You'll be fine, honey. And just keeps <laughs> just raking. Just some leaves in one area. I want to I want to watch this with, like, a psych major, somebody that's into <laughs> dreams, because there's something here about her dad never doing anything for her when crazy shit falls into her life. The keys are her trying to get away. Well, in I this, don't know. this dream projection has to be somehow tied to his his mind state at the time, right? Yes. Because the way we see it progress through yes. the movie. And I thought about playing with that. I was like, man, if I could, fi- if, I, if I figured that out, I'm like, I'm gonna go to bed really stoned tonight and just see what happens. <laughs> just if you could dream walk, though, not you don't just go to bed really stoned all the time. Never, I would okay. never go to bed really stoned all the time every night. <laughs> um, and it is kind of the theme throughout this. People start dreaming about Nick Cage, and he's very passive in all their dreams because his character is a very passive. He plays this so fucking well, dude. He's playing feeble. And kind of like uh, you can tell right away he's hungry for some sort of attention. attention. Thank yeah. you. Like he's you, it may not be from his wife, but also it might be. It might not be from the book, but it also is. He wants recognition and more than just being a tenured professor. Correct. Because yeah. even at one point, a character is like, it's okay to be a professor. Like that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, that's because she's stealing shit from him. Sure, yeah. she's a twat. But, she's a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, she took I his coin say, phrase "intelligence" as a, as, intelligence. as somebody that loves to combine words. That you is gotta give awesome. him credit. Yeah, <laughs> um, I will say, like I, Nick Cage did do a great job here. My initial concern seeing the trailer was, I was like, he's not going to be allowed to cage. But oh. but but then in the in the dreams, some of the dreams he gets to cage fully. But uh-huh. even his like his normal day to day performance is cagey in some ways, like. He starts out, he's got that very, he's like mumbly and he's very stuttering. subtle. Stuttle? Oh, his <laughs> subtle. <laughs> his his stuttering, though, is top notch. Yeah. Yes, it, it's believable. Like, and everyone's, you want to say something, don't you? Everyone can see it when they're speaking to him. Well, and you can feel his like rage simmering underneath the surface the whole time, yeah. which is him like, I think I think that's real. I think it's him trying not to cage out. <laughs> like he's trying to hold in his cageness the whole movie. He's just like, don't do it, don't do it, don't start screaming. The director's <laughs> like, we got like five seconds left, dude. You better fucking get to it. He just starts going. And they're like, cut, cut. All right, too you got, soon. You got it out, right? Too I got soon. it out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, doctor. Have I ever said I'm I not want- a doctor? I'm a director. <laughs> Same thing, man. I want I want to meet Nick Cage. I would love it if you were on our show at some point. I would love it. Just reach out to us. Bad yeah. movies worth people. We know you're watching. I mean, he'll do your he'll do your podcast. Dude, come, please. <laughs> we'll feed you and give you a place to stay. We can't pay you. I won't touch you <laughs> if that's a selling point. <laughs> I will not fondle you if that's a selling point, and I will if it is. Just if that we'll is. hang out, you we'll keep it, it chill, husband. we'll take some ayahuasca, see what happens. So he's playing Paul Matthews. He's a doctor of something. Uh, it's some some biology. It is, it is uh, evolutionary science. Uh, yes, that's evolutionary what they science. said. Doctor of ants. I like that anyway. What is this? A doctorate for ants? <laughs> he's at least twice as big. <laughs> And he is, I love, he's in his class teaching the students. He's teaching them about zebras and why there's like striped. And he's like giving this whole speech about how like they hide in a herd or whatever. And these two kids are talking and he's like, see that shit right there? He's like, you just made yourself stick out of the turd. The, the turd. <laughs> you just made yourself stick out of the turd. You're, You're poking out of the turd. You hear me? All right. <laughs> You just made yourself stick out of the herd, and now you're a target. <laughs> yeah, you got chose. I mean, he's good at what he does right here. Yeah, you know? it was, it was. I, I genuinely laughed. I was like, oh, I could see a teacher. One thing that. I was a little disappointed in, and this is just me being who I am. This is in Massachusetts, and we yep. didn't get any sort of Bostonian accent. I'm okay with that because nobody could the, do it. Maybe it's in the non accenty part. I don't know if that's Massachusetts. Yeah. It's <laughs> not Massachusetts Harvard. It's big. tiny. <laughs> it's what is that? Oslin University? Yeah, it's definitely not Harvard. It's not Harvard. He, he couldn't. They couldn't afford him over at Harvard. Nope. I'm, I'm glad you knew it was in Massachusetts because I, I was literally halfway through the movie, like where and I when took is a peek this? at his license plate, uh, his driver's Same. license. I, deal with it. I also wasn't sure when it was happening because, like, the, right, the year Molly never... says something about Obama. She, she was well. Molly, the young girl, says she was born in '96. And he says he's been a professor for 20 years. So yeah. is this supposed to be 2016? That would make sense with Obama being brought up uh, yeah. more well, than she once. She wouldn't be drinking, so it would have to be like. Well, she could be. She could be a t- different part of the year and be drinking. She's a freshly 21. Or if she was born in 96 and it's 2016, that's 20 years. Okay, so she was born depending in 2017. Depending nothing. on when she was born, or or <laughs> they just served her. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's Massachusetts. It's just outside Boston. She's in there with her grandpa. Goodwill Hunting. Cage. Those guys are all fucking like 1920 just going to pubs. 
Yeah. Boston don't give a fuck. They produced Marky Mark. <laughs> they they did. fucking called you, bro. They just make sure you got your fucking green card. How you like them apples, bro? <laughs> I don't like them apples. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, we talked a little bit about Sheila, who's the one that's like stealing his ideas and he's trying to confront her and he's like, Hey, you need to give me credit where credit's due. And she's like, but I'm not using your stuff. There's a yeah. big difference between talking about shit when you're in grad school and doing the actual and actually work. doing the work. And he's like, well, are you using the phrase intelligence? And she's like, no, Why? we're not going to use the phrase intelligence. Idiotic. That's stupid as Why fuck. Why would we do that? Cut to 20 minutes later in the movie article about intelligence. Fuck! <laughs> he yeah. gets to cage out there a little bit. Yeah, he cages out there in, in, in a real life caging. <laughs> but to like what you were saying earlier, you can see in this thing, like he He's, he's simmering, but he just can't bring himself to really confront her. He converts back to like, just give me credit, please. Like he starts begging. He even says later in the movie when he's talking to his wife and they're discussing, like she's asking him about this girl, Claire, that we're going to talk about in a second. And she's like, have you ever thought about other women? And he's like, well, of course I have. And she's like, but you haven't had an affair? And he's like, do I look that cool? Dude, I was dying. <laughs> it's like, do you think I could handle that kind of pressure? And she kind of, she's laughing. She's like, no. I know. I immediately looked at my husband and I was like, there's no fucking way he could do that. Yeah. He'd be like, I'm sorry, I had sex with another person. I <laughs> thought about somebody today. I'm sorry, I had sex with someone else and didn't tell but you. But then he, didn't Nicholas you. Cage, <laughs> <said>. <laughs> you fucked up, dude. <laughs> Nicholas Cage uses a term that a, a phrase that I'm gonna try and steal from him. He's like, "Well, you, we all know you score really high in neuroses." <laughs> uh, he he scores high. We find in assholeism, and that's the retort back to me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> But he does. They do meet this lady Claire at the this play that they're going to, who's an ex girlfriend of his, right? Yes. And she's like, "Hey, you've been on my mind a lot lately because I keep dreaming about you." And wife you is hear, immediately pissed off. We hear yeah. a couple of the students in the class, the ones that got interrupted or that interrupted. They you hear key words. Yeah. yeah. Like, is this like your dream or something like that? Yeah. You know, yep. Now it's different. It's different. He's just standing there, like yeah. So it's it's building up, and people keep looking at him. He goes to a restaurant. When he goes to that restaurant, the, the hostess. The hostess do, do I, I know you? Do I know you? Yeah. And then there's there's a dude standing outside the play, too, who's very creepy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he looks like he's just like, I'm going to mug this. He's dude. Romanian yeah. mafia, and you're going to get hit. <laughs> uh, what was her dream? Oh, it was she's strolling. She's holding the body of her dying friend. Yeah. And he's just like strolling by waving. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think my favorite part of this movie, which we're coming up to, is when he starts having people tell him their dreams. And it's almost like a montage of him in fantastically uh, sometimes sometimes scary scenarios and just walking by looking at it. Yeah. Like there's a girl like getting <laughs> about to get eaten by alligators and he just walks by, looks at it and walks the other direction. Yep. Yeah. Uh, nope. The kid, the kid, uh, the first kid who kicks it off. <laughs> uh, I do want to say, cause it's important to the story for where we go. Claire was meeting with him afterwards to ask about publishing information yes. about the dream. So she could get his permission, <sighs> which is how the world finds out. Because all these people are dreaming about him. And it's not just the few we've met. We find out. He's got hundreds of messages. Um, oh, he does ask, too, real quick. He asks Tim Meadows, who's playing the dean of the school here. Just um, dry as can be in the best way. Oh, the so best funny. Way. What did we just see him in where he was playing like, the same character? Yes, the Mandalorian. Yeah. Where he's just like a very dry administrator. I actually liked it. I, I, there's a couple cameos in Mandalorian that I really didn't like. Uh, mostly Jack Black and uh, Lizzo. Lizzo. But I really liked the Tim Meadows one because he's just a he's funny when he's being when he's not acting. Yeah, he's just the administrator. That's like, yeah, well, you can't do that. So yeah. I don't know. Where's my TPS report? <laughs> but <laughs> excuse it, me, I think you have my stapler. <laughs> gonna have to burn the place to the ground. <laughs> Nick Cage asks him, uh, "Have you been dreaming about me?" And he's like, what? "Like ever in life?" <laughs> or <laughs> so I'm gonna start greeting people. Hey, have you been dreaming about me? All right. Well, and it does get dropped, but at first I started to notice because Tim Meadows isn't dreaming about him. Uh, we we see Dylan Baker in the movie playing uh, Richard, who's the guy that always has – Dylan Baker was Kurt Connors in the, the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans. He's been in a bunch of shit, but that's yeah. my first go-to. Oh, I go to uh, the uh, Prime video – the Prime movie about – or sorry, it's a TV show about hunting Nazis. Hunters. Oh, I haven't watched it. He plays a uh, a surviving Nazi guy, and he's fucking tremendous in that. He's in that he's series. usually good. I like him, but yeah. he's his wife has been having dreams about Nick Cage, and their friend at the party, who's also a woman, has been having dreams about Nick Cage. So at first, I was like, "Is it just women?" Yeah, but that then once it goes the public, thing. 
the messages are from all kinds of people. There's one that definitely says, bro, I've been dreaming about you. So it's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it's kind of a cool thing. Like, you know what? This something they use in this movie that is not new. They just cut the dialogue sometimes. And there's just uh it's not dead silent, you have music and stuff, but it kind of leaves it to you. Like we, it's dialogue that's not needed. I we love just see that. the conversation. It happens you'll multiple hear a laugh, times. And it's then like, you'll see like lips moving, but you won't hear anything else. Yeah. It's, it's like him crying. just tuning out what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Like he's like, well, yeah. I don't care Beautifully about this. Done. So. At some points, oh it's, it's like the montage about the dreams I had mentioned. There's a couple points where it just goes into that mode we're talking about because we don't need to hear the dream. We're seeing it. Yeah. We don't need the narration. And, you know, even finer points than that. But it was done. It's, it's cool. I like it. Um, but he's, so he finds out someone wants to interview him and his wife is like, maybe you should think about this and not do that. It might be bad. And he's like, okay, I'll think about it. Cut to interview, interview. like a C-SPAN <laughs> style fucking yeah. interview. And he's just eating it up. He's loving that people are paying attention to him and he's special for some reason. He's talking to his mom on the phone. He's like, you're making me miss the interview. <laughs> he's like, I, I love that. That just, that shows which seems to be a theme in a lot of A24 movies, which I guess is because like Ari Aster makes movies about mommy issues and stuff. But like, he's like, no, I didn't do anything, mom. It's not my fault. Like <laughs> you can see where his like timidness comes from. It's his mom being like overbearing. Yeah. Oh, and speaking what? of timidness and answering to a, a more powerful female, he took her name in the marriage. Yes. yes. It, me it means nothing except for that little conversation between him and the ex. Yeah, because she's like, oh, you changed your last name. Yeah, I took hers. Well, we thought it would. I, I thought it. To, I wanted to. I yeah. wanted to. Like, okay, sounds not rehearsed. Um, so then the, the yeah, he goes into class and his classroom is packed. Mm -hmm. And only like half the people are there for the class. The other half are just there to see Dream Man. And he starts, he's, he's like, like, I'll give you five minutes and then we're going on to But this. you can see so fast that five minutes is not going to be enough. Dude, he yeah, gets yeah. the fucking, he jacks it off and he, gets, <laughs> he settles in for this. And he yeah, starts, he's like, we, you, you, we're going to learn you. something today. Yeah. He cages it off. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> I'd sign up for any fucking class he wants to teach. I might be religious if he was a priest. Yeah, I. By the way, this first start it. This first kid who has shares his dream, who which does have narration and then leads into the dream. This is an awesome dream. Oh, the, the ice cream mushrooms? mushrooms. Yeah, dreaming about. He's like, I'm talking. I'm eating these these weird <sighs> mushrooms I've never seen before. But it's definitely a shot of him eating ice cream cones that kind of look like mushrooms yeah. with like blueberries. But then you see them on the trees. Yeah, it's fucking weird and it's awesome. And everybody's I in tuxedos it. and they're just like staring at the ground. I want and he, he says they're all frozen because I realize there's a tall man chasing us. He it's, not the height of, it's not the height of the man that terrifies you. <laughs> no. It's the fact that he looks filleted and covered yeah, in blood. Yeah, his skin is peeled yes. off. It looks like the monster at the end of Smile, which I bring up, what I, which I brought up to her in the theater because at one point, when, Nick, when everybody's having the bad dreams about him, I was like, he's going to turn into that monster. He's just going to peel off his skin and just be like a, a bloody skeleton. <laughs> yeah, it's a wild ass dream. And this is another part where Nicolas Cage is uh, character Still Paul. a standby. Yeah, he's just he's just touching. He's like, wow, these are fascinating mushrooms. Yeah, the kid's wow, getting killed by getting this. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one girl, there's an earthquake. And he's mm -hmm. just strolling through like he's like, hey, how are you doing? Well, she's like everybody's <laughs> and I love it because he's casually asking the student how she's doing and a body is just falling off the rafters <laughs> behind it. Great laugh from uh, I mean, all 10 of us in the theater. <laughs> oh, my God. That guy in the front, dude. Kudos. Um, and he's, he's asked his wife why she's not dreaming about him. Like, or if she, if, if she's she has, asking, why am I not? Okay. Yeah. You? Yeah. And, and then he, he gets a little playful. <laughs> yeah. He's like, well, you get all of me. <laughs> yeah. Do you, does it turn you on that a thousand people are dreaming about me and they're getting into some they weird get, sex stuff? It does. I, and I say on. weird, I'm not sh kink shaming anybody, but it's weird. Yeah. yeah. Just all this scene is, but this scene is uncomfortable. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's dream. It's like dream cuck. <laughs> Very strange. But I do love, uh, he's talking about, what her, what her fantasy would be, and it's him showing up in the talking head suit. <laughs> the way oversized suit. <laughs> but he's like, that's that's it? That's your sexy dream? How about I show up on a horse naked with a huge penis? Wait, <laughs> who's like, got the huge penis? <laughs> you or the horse? <laughs> well, me, of course. <laughs> and then this is where things start to go sour a little bit. Uh, a guy uh, who I wrote in my notes as Stabby Stalker. Uh, breaks into their house. Oh, he steals goes a full knife. six cents. Yeah, yeah, he does. I was thinking, uh, who's that guy that tried to kill George Harrison? Doesn't matter. Because he broke into his house. Or he did kill him. He broke into his house and stabbed him, right? I don't know. No, yeah. I'm not a Beatles fan. Me neither. You, I, That's why I was trying to find out I how he died. I thought shit I was alone. <laughs> no. None of us are. Oh my God, yeah. is this why we're friends? <laughs> yeah, we have really bad taste, but not in that. 
<laughs> like that movie yesterday that came out where oh, like God. the Beatles disappeared and that kid steals all their songs. No. I was really into the premise up until he started singing their songs. <laughs> so the Beatles don't exist? I'm in. <laughs> I'll buy a ticket. Uh, but he goes to this like, uh, the the guy tries to like well he doesn't try to kill them he breaks in with a knife and keeps saying I have to kill you yeah and Nick and then Cage freezes down up. in the corner and cries like bitch yeah come on. and Nick Cage freezes up and has this like horrified look on his face because he's like holy shit I am that guy that just stands there and does nothing in, yeah. in a tragedy even this this cop slash consultant yeah, yeah. you know kind of says something because he's like well you gotta be prepared he's like I'm not gonna get a gun. And I was like, well, you gotta we're not do asking, something. We're not asking you to get a gun, but you, know. you obviously yeah. froze up yeah, and don't like, know you, how you, to you, handle it. You, you seemed pretty helpless in the yeah, situation. Helpless. Yes. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to advocate you should have a gun, but bars at the minimum. Security, like well, yeah, there's- you don't have a security system. You had an unlocked point of entry. Um, he's like, maybe you should move. I can't move. Or the wife, I can't move. Yeah. My family, I grew up in this house. So he's giving them tips on how to like reinforce your house and try to keep people out. But shit, how do you have a house without fucking bars on the windows in 2023? How do you I not mean, lock your doors? Yeah. Yeah. Anytime after 1961. How do you not sleep with a loaded <laughs> fucking gun on your nightstand? I mean, we have that. <laughs> it's just an us thing. <laughs> That's just Arizona. It's yeah, Arizona. It's Arizona. I don't know how maybe po- Texas. I don't know how popular guns are in Massachusetts. I'm betting you're pretty popular. Well, with you with know, with with intellectual it's types. Where a revolution got kicked I'm off. I'm sorry. Where. Where was that bombing? Wait, there was a revolution? Yeah. When? Ours. <laughs> Just uh, kidding. Right around 1776. Oh, okay. Wasn't there like tea involved? Yeah, there was a tea bagging. There was the Boston tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's um, going to be the wrestling move. <laughs> <laughs> it's Marky Mark with a steel chair. I'm going to give him the fucking Boston tea bag, bro. He jumps Hold off his the mouth top open. turnbuckle. It just slaps his balls on his forehead. <laughs> you get up and you just have a weird like UW shaped thing yeah. on your head. Not, I mean, not U shaped. He's folks. not fucking Lance Armstrong. He's not. It's W shaped. Uh, but you were talking about the goal. Boston bombing. Yes, that was a thing. Yeah. But they, you know, no, if any if any of those runners had a gun, <laughs> I don't think that would have stopped anybody. Texas, <laughs> they would all have a gun. If you ran a marathon in Tucson, they probably wouldn't be strapped up. <laughs> Texas, maybe. <laughs> Um, so then he we cut to he goes to like this PR firm, yeah, uh, oh. run by Michael Sarah, who I didn't yes. know was in the movie, and thought, oh, what a treat! Yes, <laughs> yeah. oh my god! And this isn't Sarah being uh, Sarah. He's actually like he, he's playing acting? a character. He's playing he's, a character. He's actually yeah. acting in this one. Yeah, <laughs> and I was very happy with this. Yeah, and he's clearly been he's clearly sat in on these branding meetings. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's making he's I, I think he's making fun of somebody very specific in his life that acted this so? way and he's like, God, you're so perfectly poisoned. I'm using that. <laughs> I I don't doubt that. Yeah. I can see that happening. Life experience. I love it. But they're trying to get him to sell ads in Dream Space, basically. <laughs> and I got yeah. sick. I got so <laughs> sick during this. I was just, like it's gonna happen as soon as they can figure this out. As soon as we get those little glowy pillow armbands oh, in yeah. the movie here. Um, well, then they're going to have to sell me one that blocks that. <laughs> well, I think the idea with that you thing is you have to buster. have one for yeah, them we'll to be able to get in your dream, buster, right? Buster. Oh, okay. So, cool. Maybe not. Cool. I'm know. opting out. Because it, he didn't seem like he was too happy about that guy trying to sell him shoes. But he did have it on because he was trying to enter yeah. somebody else's dream later. So, yeah, Michael, Sarah, this other lady, and and Molly, who we discussed, are at this meeting. And they're trying to tell him to sponsor or to sell Sprite in people's dreams or yeah. whatever. He's there because he thinks that they're going to give him help him with his, his book deal. Because he's trying to – he has this idea of writing this uh, – he's like, I have a book about ants or whatever – that you know, I just need to find a publisher. You said plants. Sure, right? you're gonna write a book about plants. Your your book about plants. But earlier when he's talking to the one lady about it, he's like, "Yeah, I just need to find a publisher." And she's like, "Oh, can I read like a, a treatment?" And he's like, well, "Well, I haven't got to the actual like writing part." He keeps back <laughs> the first. He's, he says like, "I haven't finished it because I want to make sure it's complete. I don't want any corporate influence." Well, right. how far along are you? I haven't sat and actually started the writing part of it yet. <laughs> I definitely think about ants. Yeah. <laughs> um, Molly, is that? Uh, Molly yeah. is the She's one. She's the first indication we have that the dreams are changing. 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 Yeah. Because changing. Yeah. all of a sudden now... She's got this. We don't know. She's snickering. They're snickering about it, but something happened. Well, in the elevator, he, she's like, "Oh, I dreamed about you a lot." And he's like, "Well, hopefully, I was behaving." And oh, she's no. like, uh, <laughs> "Nope." Instant, instant blush. Like, Mur. so everybody's like, "Oh, you fucked him in that dream, didn't you?" Oh yeah. <laughs> or he was watching you fuck. I don't know. <laughs> uh, she's got a little rightful thirst 
So I, we we know there was fucking. And when they're leaving in the elevator, she's like, "So, uh, like, you want to get a drink or something?" And I'm like, "Oh, she's trying to bang Nicolas Cage." I mean, I would. I love you. I I get it, I but like, maybe, I don't know about this Nicolas Cage. I thought maybe, like you said, he's a watch. <laughs> like he was watching. I was like, maybe she's gonna go to her hot boyfriend or girlfriend and just have old Nicky Cage in the back jerking. Ooh. And I mean, <laughs> we'll Is talk that about a service he offers? we'll talk about the dream a little bit because. It could still I don't work. Think we should. Well, I, I just, just the beginning. He, it starts with him in the corner. Oh, super so creepy. So it would totally work. Yeah. Super he's hiding. He's in hiding the in the shadows. That's me in the corner. And you could That's barely see his outline. I think. Yeah. I think I want to discuss it because I really got to talk about. Uh, I think it's worth discussing. I got to talk about the end. That's okay. like the funniest part of the movie. If you don't want to hear this part, if you don't want to hear this part, just. Just stop right now. Or you. Or you. Or you. You're fine. Okay, you can't see her. Don't but. let them boss you around. Stop right now <laughs> because we're going to throw some juicy shit down. But yeah, she definitely was dreaming about fucking him. She invites yeah, him back to was. her house and she's trying to have him like relive the dream. Oh my God. And can he's I, so fucking since I'm awkward. The girl, can I be, do this part? Go for it. So she's sitting on the couch and she's like, who's there? Who are you? And then like this shadow appears out of the corner. Nothing. Sorry. Cock. Cock. cock, cock, is that just a cock, cock? <laughs> cock Did you mean to say cut? <laughs> cock, I meant to say cock spank, and then I said cock, and then nothing came out. Anyways, dark figure coming towards her, and cock. she's like, don't, "Don't hurt me, please, don't hurt me." And he sits down, and Silent. then he just like, Rah! every woman <laughs> wants her hair grabbed from the also, back. Also, by the just, way, though, he doesn't just grab her her he back of her, her hair. First. He That's grabs gross. her head and also shoves his hand into her crotch. <laughs> and yes. She, and That's that fun. does it for her. That yeah. does it for her. I mean, I mean, this is. I mean, is, I, I, I understand that girls like that, but I don't know if they always like it if it's just a dude who appeared out of your corner and you don't know who he is, and also he's like middle-aged dad bod. Yeah, if you, if you got some consent, <laughs> if you have some understanding, and you're in a consentful relationship, this is a great game to play. Yes. But don't, yes. guys, don't show up at girls' houses and just do this. This yeah. is not what Whitney's getting at. That you're hundred percent. Yeah. No. Wrong message. Wrong message. Uh, I figured out why it's based in 2016, though, because he does grab her by the pussy and he doesn't want any connection they don't want That's any connection fair, to yeah, that he's like, not hey. famous they don't ju- and they won't just let you if you're not exactly famous. right and there is some poking fun oh, at that no. alt-right shit so i understood <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, so that she going, gets it she's just horrified this had to be a little after then too because they do talk about alt-right and like tucker carlson uh, tuck, and all that yeah. stuff so oh, p- uh podcast of joe rogan but he's been doing that for 50 years yeah and i think he was the first podcast in 1891 <clears throat> oh back then <laughs> <laughs> Podcasting was just finding a pole at the end of the barn yelling. <laughs> but they try to relive it. They're re- reenacting it. Nicholas Cage is insanely awkward. Do it, Jeff. And he, 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 I'm not like trying to. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that he should do this or shouldn't do it. That's whatever. He does suspect that his wife is cheating on him. Yes, Cause, yes. Because he That's called her and she's with her coworker and they're at Cliff. the house alone. Chris. But he like, even says, like, ah, married. And she's like, I know we can stop whenever you want, which is, you know, that's fine. It gives him an out. But then he doesn't take it. And she starts going in for some action. We get a little. Pong. <laughs> he just farts and he's like uh, it's t- it's totally natural it's 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 it's, a, it's an understandable she's, she's like, like it's fine it's fine just stop gonna, talking just, about it i'm please. gonna work through this he's like it's actually kind of healthy if you think about it <laughs> <laughs> and she good dude she's a fucking soldier she's man. a trooper man she and, goes for the belt yeah this is a long scene and it's kind of like it made me uncomfortable at a certain point because it just kept going and i was like dude when is this and gonna stop either, either take either take the dick out or put it away but make a fucking choice and then <laughs> she's under doing his belt and he just uh, uh. <laughs> did you just oh, come? Hold on, wait <laughs> I mean followed up by the old fucking I mean <laughs> and I ladies mean, tell it, me you've been there where a man comes and then farts wait what <laughs> I've never been there. Don't I've never been me. there. And every time I have sex, there's at least one guy there. <laughs> I mean, I, I only fart during sex. I, <laughs> How do you think he gets that thrust? Yes, it's the propulsion. <laughs> I, I think that part of my body shuts off for sexy time. Like I get, a, I, get a, I get a boner and I get no fucking farts allowed. Really? Yeah. I'm a gentleman. <laughs> you're Maybe. halfway through and you're just like, I'll be right back. I'm going to take a shit. <laughs> Maybe oh, it's no. a geriatric I'm not thing. putting that thing on the porcelain echo Wait, chamber. Wait, so you're banging geriatrics? Not recently. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm only 38. <laughs> I mean, I know physically I'm geriatric. We've been together but... <laughs> for 10 years. I did have a life before then. Yeah, did you? 
Okay, I had a life 17 years ago. Life of banging old dudes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, kind of had his type. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get that insurance money. Uh, this is by far the funniest scene in the movie. It is, 100%. Uh, uh, and, and oh, riotous. we didn't mention, by the way, and it's just, it's very funny. A guy, they're at, it's Halloween when they're at the bar. Oh, when God, he's at the bar yeah. with her. And this guy walks in dressed <laughs> like him. And it's just like he they make eye contact and it's just hard cut. And uh, just, there are some hard cuts in this movie. And I love it. Actually, this scene, the not the the cum fart scene <laughs> excuse me it's called a cum blast <laughs> the, the bar scene I was noticing like so there's a lot of ooh fapulence there's a lot of <laughs> coin it t-shirt fapulence <laughs> fapulent I'm fapulent uh, <laughs> but there's a lot of weird edits in the bar scene like uh -huh. he gets up to get them drinks and it's like it's a it's a two shot of them facing each other. Okay, but then when he gets up, it's like cut to behind her, cut to the other angle, cut to like an above shot, cut to this side, like all like do 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 do. Yeah, which and is I weird. Loved it. But, but it makes it I, it makes sense. He's rolling with this fast. Everything's happening fast at yeah. this moment to him, and he's eating it up. If we didn't talk about it, he's eating up this fame more and more and more. I mean, even when he's at that meeting, he's like they they, they pitch Sprite and they pitch Obama, and he never drops the Obama thing. Yeah, because no. they literally are like, maybe we can make Obama dream about you, and then it's just dropped from them. But the whole rest of the movie, he's like, so uh, what's up with that Obama thing? Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, then the dreams start to change and everybody starts having like nightmares. And the only one I want to talk about, because everything else is kind of what you want to yeah, see. Yeah, this is it's the crazy stuff. The one that starts it, though, yes. is his daughter. And <laughs> it's so is, dude, this Nicholas one's in the Cage preview, so kicks yeah, go the for fucking it. door open and just starts <laughs> just running at camera <laughs> in the most terrifying manner ever. Like, this was awesome. Yeah, How many it, takes do you think they made him do that in? One. He nailed it in one. He's a professional. <laughs> it's like he works Nicholas for... Nicholas Cage, right. I want him to replace the Oscar statue. He, he nailed it, but how many times do you think they had him do that? <laughs> now, uh, uh, try one backwards. Try one on your hand. It's like he works for the Department of Silly Walks or whatever yeah. it was. Oh, no, that's the Ministry of Silly Runs. Ministry. The Ministry. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what it is. Fuck because yeah. it's British. John Cleese would be proud, man. <laughs> oh. But yeah, the, the, the dreams descend into madness. Bad things start happening and uh -huh. everybody just turns on him. And the movie right here like um, shifts. shifts. But then after it shifts hard, there is it's a complete slowdown. But I was still interested. Yeah. It was a slowdown of the also, movie without being a lull. Well, because then it slows down, but then you're like, but what the fuck is going on? Uh -huh. so. Also, I fucking hate Janet. I want uh, to punch her in the face. His wife, the wife. wife, yeah, fuck her. I fucking hate her. I, uh, yeah, she did a lot of things wrong. He has it's, a point. Like, there's why no can't communication. You just back me up here. There's no communication. The well, relationship, they lie to though. each other the whole fucking time. And yeah. this whole like switch thing is definitely like the writer who I didn't. I think it's the director also. Okay. Uh, it's definitely like a whole metaphor for like the cancel culture situation 100%. that we find ourselves. It's in. brought up well, a couple in today's times. society also. Like, yeah. I love what he says. Yeah. Uh, I don't trauma, say I'll it. say it, dude. Okay, I, you say I think it. it's, yeah, trauma is a trend. Yeah. It is. You know, he's like having an argument with your friend is trauma. And, you know, the, sometimes it, it sometimes it is just a bad day. He's like, they just you need to what? get the fuck Throw over. The fuck yeah. Up. yeah. Yeah. And I do I do respect anyone's actual trauma, but that word is overutilized. Yeah. It's taking it away from it's, people who yeah. actually well, experience it's because trauma. it's because it's a hashtag. Yeah. Oh, don't do that ever <laughs> again. You fucking anime character. <laughs> <laughs> Love <laughs> and peace. <laughs> But yeah, everybody starts to turn on him and things go a little crazy. And we kind of get into the, th the the second half of the second act and the third act. And it's <laughs> that's where we don't really want to spoil what's yeah. going on. It's a fun flow to a movie. Because you do see this. If you've seen the trailer, it does. It doesn't explicitly tell you, but it shows a little bit of like a cut here and a cut there from some of the bad dreams. Yeah. So you understand that things are going differently for him. Um, I think. We do. There's one part you can, do need to talk about can, the diner. We yes. already we okay. already we already talked about the cum fart. Yeah, no. The I want to talk about the diner just okay. because it was fucking. Re I, I'm on Nick Cage's side in this A scene. I mean, I'm on his side in almost this entire movie. This scene in particular. Scene? I don't care who you are. You're on his side right yes. here yes. because he is being treated very poorly for things that he did not control. You can't be. This is the the maximum equivalent of being mad at your partner for cheating on you in their dream. In their, yeah. in it would their be like, dream. It would be like you waking up and divorcing Derek the next day because of a dream. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody's mad at him, like we said, and he's at this diner and the waitress asks him politely and timidly because she knows that she's wrong, but, but she's she has to do, her, to do job. her job. 
She's like, hey, can you leave? Because some some people here who don't want you here. And he's like, go fuck yourself. I bought a sandwich and some fries. I'm eating my sandwich. I'm finishing my coffee. I'm perfectly calm, dude. <laughs> and this guy <laughs> walks over to him, this big burly dude. Just get out. And he's man. like, yeah, nobody wants you here. Get the fuck out. This is where a Boston accent really would have been. Yeah, sense. it would have been great. Yeah, it would have been better. And he's like, no, I'm finishing my food and then I'll fucking leave. And this guy picks up his plate and just hawks a loogie in it. <laughs> and fucking Nick Cage gets up and hucks his fucking sandwich at this guy, <laughs> yep. which is awesome you know i'm team don't fucking touch my food i'm definitely team don't spit in my food don't lug in my food <laughs> yeah, don't lug in my food dude yeah. but no the throw of the sandwich was great yeah and, and, then, then, and then hard Ooh. cut too he got the shit beat out of him uh-huh. yeah. and it descends into madness from there and it's I, I just I, I felt so bad for Nick Cage throughout this entire movie. And I mean, some of it, like the way they kind of present it is maybe this is based on his frame of mind, like I said earlier. So maybe it some of it's his fault in the sense that he was eating up the attention too much. Yes. not I don't think it was too detrimental. I think it's nothing that a normal most people would do. Well, especially a person, a an invisible person like this. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody would act like He's this. He's been but- wanting to be seen. For a long time yeah. is well, what I what? get. Now you're seen. Yeah, and he wants to be unseen. But we do, without talking about the rest of the the, the nightmare segment, we get the cagey parts there. Uh-huh. That's where yeah, he f- goes full fucking cage, man. Yeah, I could have, <laughs> I could have, I could have just done ten more minutes of this. Part. Yeah, we got like eight dreams of him being passive, and we only which got like fun, three or four of fun. him being crazy. Let's just see a montage of murder dreams or <laughs> or, or whatever. Someone yeah. definitely mentions his daughter mentions rape at some point. I'm like, oh. Ooh. I mean, I understand those girls not wanting to be around Nick Cage or guys. Who knows who's dreaming these things? But I don't know. If I had a dream about someone murdering me, I'd be like, that was weird. Joke's on him. I'm into some weird shit. (laughs) I'm like, that was cool. Same (laughs) Yeah, hit me with a hammer. Yeah. That's the ultimate donkey punch. (laughs) But yeah, that's kind of where we want to stop. We don't want to ruin the whole movie. We do have spoilers. We didn't mention it, but there's going to be, there was a big flashy thing that said spoiler alert at the beginning. I was pointing. Reporting. Spoiler. <laughs> oh, it's elusive. Wah, wah, wah. Spoiler, 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 spoiler. I just made more work for myself. <laughs> or you what cut an it. Idiot. But yeah, so I mean we kind of you kind of have an idea of where we are because we discussed how we felt about everything yeah. at the beginning. I do but have, how do we feel about a recommendation? So I, I have do want to see it again. A, I have a reverse caveat. Okay. Normally okay. my caveat is to watch this with somebody drinking and Watch this alone or with quiet people. Yeah, and be ready to think it's it's pensive, and I, I enjoy it. Or that one to friend who point, laughs I'm gonna really watch loud. It again. Yeah, or yeah. Just, or just only laughs, doesn't uh-huh. talk. Because that guy made. I enjoyed this movie, <laughs> but that fucking guy. I was just like, oh god, this. He is- definitely upped the volume of my laugh because of his like, fucking laugh. During yeah, but the-, the guys behind us were the ones talking and trying to dissect every part of the movie. Yeah. I don't know if you could hear. Him, oh, I could barely. I heard hear them it. during the trailers, but I didn't hear them during. I the could movie. barely oh. hear it. It didn't bother me, but I could. I, I knew you were there talking. Luckily, the theater that we like to go to is like one of those ones where they've added reclining seats, and it wasn't built that way, which means. They have these like little wall barriers between uh-huh. each row, which is wonderful. It's, like, it's like watching a movie in a cubicle. Yeah, it's yes. awesome. It's <laughs> great. All theaters should just be cubicles of three to four seats. And if you buy one, no one else can buy the rest. I love this. <laughs> I'll go to every movie. I'll go and be like, all right, you've got a cubicle. I've got a cubicle. You've got a cubicle. <laughs> Look under I'm your putting, chairs. You get a cubicle. I'm putting my you- <laughs> popcorn on this seat and my soda on this seat. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? My hat over there just for good yeah. measure. Don't need it. <laughs> but yeah, so you say you want to see it again. Yes, I recommend. definitely do. Uh, yeah. You already said at the beginning. Yeah. So, yeah. and I'm definitely going to recommend it. I thought it was a great time. Like I said, it petered off at the end and I felt a little left hanging at the end. But For sure. it does have a nice ending to it. It just doesn't, I feel like it doesn't conclude everything. There's no ribbon. There's no yeah. bow. There's yeah. no bow. There's no like spoon fed anything. But I think that leaves it more up to, and I, I do dig that on some movies where it's left up to you to interpret some, the end. It, it, uh, Body wants to <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I Sorry. just I just got smashed mouth. <laughs> yeah, you did. That's the end of my night. No, I'll tell you, the funniest part of the night was actually not the movie. It was when I thought Derek asked me if I wanted to see Matrix the Musical. Because <laughs> there's and a sign that a says, like, thing. Waitress the Musical. And I got really excited because I was like, there's a Matrix musical? That sounds fucking great. And then Blue you guys pill, wrote red it. pill, which do you choose? <laughs> there is no spoon. 
<laughs> there is no spoon. Which part has the chorus line where they're all kicking their legs and stuff? Um, it's me. Is that the orgy in number two? That's, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, we're not follow getting major. The rabbit. It's follow the rabbit. Follow the rabbit. Ah, okay. Yeah. Follow the rabbit to the nightclub. Do, do. We gotta have. We gotta, <laughs> I'm not a get, songwriter. We gotta get a, a phenomenal Agent Smith. <laughs> it's the stench. <laughs> the stench of humanity. It's the mean ones, Mr. Stench. <laughs> oh, all right. Really so anybody who writes the Matrix one. the musical, we don't need money, but we just want credit. Yeah. Yeah. Just give us Unless credit. it makes a lot of money, then we'll take money. I just, I just want fucking credit. <laughs> Put me in the notes. Look, you wrote Intelligence the musical. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Intelligence, that's mine. That's me. <laughs> But we'll wrap this up so we don't fucking yammer for three hours as per usual. I'm going to anyway, just not right now. <laughs> just I'm going to go do that somewhere else. Well, off off camera. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be filming it. I don't know what else we'll be doing coming up. There's a bunch of movies coming out. I don't know what'll be stuff that we want to talk about here. Yeah. I have to go watch them and see. I'll go see them all. And then I mean, I'll let if you anybody's know. interested, I think that we should do, and we'll probably have we'll probably stream it at this point. But next goal wins. I think yeah. I think it's an episode for the cameras. So if you're interested, let us know. If yeah, we not, did. We did off. discuss that. I was just worried it wasn't going to still be in theaters because I do need to watch it again. I will. we just watched it yesterday, but yeah. by the time we record, I'll need exactly. to watch it. Again. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've seen it recently, <laughs> but it's not going to stay in my brain. Do you have anything? Concur. All right. <laughs> well thank you guys for tuning in and checking out this episode don't forget to check out our podcast it's available anywhere you get podcasts and you can find us at badmoviesworstpeople.com badmoviesworstpeople it's right there on the boob and <laughs> on our website you can also find links to merchandise uh, tell your friends about this check it out click the button up there that says subscribe click the little thumbs up down there that says thumbs up it doesn't say thumbs up but you know what I mean it is a thumbs up yeah so thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Vin Derek. I'm still Whitney. I'm Jack. Good night, and we'll see you in your dreams. Ooh. <laughs>